gonna like gonna... Hi, good evening. That worked. Didn't it work? Okay, it works. So, good evening. This is January 28th, 2019, and it is 7.01, and we will begin our evening. Number one, call to order, roll call. Mr. Hase. Here. Mr. Seaman. Mr. Corner. Here. Mr. Stavropoulos. Here. Mr. Vesey. Here. Ms. McCumber. Here. Mr. Petrantoni. Here. Hmm. Thank you. Number two, approval minutes on November 19th, 2018. Mr. Chairman, in spite of the fact it's been some time between since the last meeting, I move we approve the minutes as a <laughs> printed. I'll second. Okay. Can we have a, a call to approve? To do that? We have a second. Do I have a second? We've had a second. A second. Yes. Yeah, we have a second, second here. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Petrantoni. Good evening. Oh, you say yes. Yes. Say yes. 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 <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, okay, yeah. Ms. Okay. McCumber. Yes. Mr. Vesey. Yes. Mr. Stavropoulos. Yes. Mr. Coiner. Yes. Mr. Seaman. Yes. Mr. Hase. Yes. Everybody, thank you. So number three, election of officers. And I'm curious about that. Do we have new officers that we're electing? Well, you will be. So oh. I am going to go ahead and run the election. I hope there's no recount. Um, so I'm going to call for nominations for chair for the board. Anyone wishing to put in a nomination for chair for the board? Oh, please. Somebody. You got to nominate someone. Well, I nominate the current chairman. The current chairman. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Any other nominations? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none opposed, congratulations, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Any, nomi yeah. <laughs> any nominations for vice chair? Well, I nominate the current vice chair. Is there a second? Second. Any other nominations for vice chair? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, congratulations, Mr. Vice Chairman. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Trump they rain again. Happy. Another Please. year. <laughs> Must have done a good job. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing in the rules of procedure that says you can't serve, serve consecutive terms. So. Okay. Well, I understand I have a year left. <laughs> so so for, our, for our new board members, what we do is in January, generally, the first meeting of the year, we always do selection of officers. And we get drunk to work and all that, you know. So I mean <laughs> did you you did bring the new guys, you got you brought tequila, right? Oh, I didn't hear about that that hazing ritual yet, but I'm I'm all open to it. That's fine. Not hazing at all. <laughs> so what we, do, what we generally right? do is we do election of officers <laughs> do the first year of the month that we organize here, we organize for the for the year. And so these are the same officers that you'll have going forward for the year, then next January we'll have another election for the month. Hopefully, my chair and my vice chair do not leave me, but in the, in the event that they do, we then will do another organization. Okay, and I'm going to, if you guys don't mind, steal the, steal the show here. I'd like to introduce and welcome our two, our board, our new board members. This is um, Dave Pitcher and Tony. He's our regular member, and we have a new alternate member, which is Melissa Vigil. She's over here. So um, they're both new. They were appointed at the last BOC meeting, I believe. And so they were lucky enough since the meeting was delayed because of the holidays that they could catch up with us for the first meeting of the year. So I'd like you guys to welcome. And if they would like to say a little bit about, you know, their interest and why they, they've, they're serving, they're welcome to do that. Oh, um, all right. I'll keep it quick. Um, I'm pretty boring. Uh, I, I did, I got my yeah, master's. Bring the tequila. Per, <laughs> exactly. That's for the next one. If y'all like me enough to bring me back, that would be like my bribe. Um, <laughs> I'm, you know, like I said, I'm pretty boring. I like public policy. I got my master's in that field. 
uh, native of Tarpon, and I, you know, decided I was always involved in, like, theoretical work. I never did anything actually, like, applied like this. Um, so I decided, you know, it's time to get some good, like, municipal uh, experience, just hands-on stuff. So I was honored enough to be accepted, and I look forward to sitting here with y'all. Melissa, would you like to say a few words? That's super. Welcome. Welcome. I appreciate that. If there's anything myself or my staff can help you guys with as you integrate, um, we'd be glad to do that, whether it's sit down and provide resources or if you need any information, just get in touch with either Kim, myself, or Pat. Okay? And with thanks that, for helping. So, I didn't mean to serving. steal. Okay. I didn't mean to steal your thunder, but we didn't have now, uh, introductions on here because your agenda was posted in uh, in December to give you guys plenty of time to review the public notice stuff. So they kind of got added at the last minute. So, so thank I you. have to say I do apologize to the public. We don't have tequila here afterwards. <laughs> it was just a joke. Have to be cautious nowadays. <clears throat> so, moving on. I'm disappointed, though. Uh, number four, quasi-judicial announcement and swearing in of speakers. Well, we're not going to need that tonight because the agenda does not call for any quasi-judicial applications, which is why you have no one in the public because we don't have any applications. We, have two appli we had two applications, but one of the applications the staff has actually chosen, which is 18149, to pull off this agenda. You'll see that in... Um, uh, February at your next meeting, we need to re-advertise it. There was a change that we decided to add to that language, so we want to make sure that we get that re-advertised and we'll put it back on your agenda. So it'll be similar to the language that is actually in your packet here, but there's been some added language to that to that stat, to that language, and it's actually available on the website. But you will have it in a packet and sent to you with the next agenda once the agenda closes on Friday. Um, your next agenda will close on Friday, and then we'll have all applications um, sent to you as soon as that uh, agenda is prepared. And with that, application 18149 is the Land Development Code Amendment um, to the Development Agreement section. It's a fairly straightforward change. The change basically includes 149 is being postponed. So essentially what this change is, is there's a brief section under section D or paragraph D under section 96. And this deals with the actual time frame that the board of commissioners can actually approve at, at each developer agreement. So when a new developer agreement comes in, currently there's a maximum time frame of five years. The board can then extend that through another set of hearings beyond the five-year window, so they would have to come back. What we're basically giving the board the option to do here is to have a, uh, a developer agreement initially approved for 10 years. The state statute allows for developer agreements to be approved for up to 30 years. We're, staff's not comfortable with allowing that as an initial review. 30 years is a long time window. You don't have projects of the size and scale that most other communities have they have time frames of that long, but 10 years provides an additional um, measure that the board can go anywhere from the zero to five year mark or the zero to 10 year mark or seven years, whatever they want within that window as, their, as part of the negotiations. So a developer agreement's a little bit different than some of the other applications that you see. Most of the provisions in the developer agreement, including the duration of the developer agreement, are negotiated between staff and the city, and then they're brought forward to the planning and zoning board for recommendation and then they come back to the BOC for a final approval. It's a very similar process to what you see in most of your other applications, but it's a very negotiated and different process because every provision within that agreement is actually, has to be consistent with the Land Development Code, but it's a negotiation. It's not, you do this and we let you go. We let you go. It's more of a, ba a back and forth that's a decided between the, the two parties. So that's really what the, the crux of this change is, is just giving the board 
the the uh, d the additional five year window that they can choose from when they're doing their negotiations through staff for a developer to come forward with. So that's the crux of what's included in this change. Is there any questions? Yes. <clears throat> so you're asking us to give. So first off, what is So a developer says, I want to build by the hospital in Winn-Dixie a huge complex in 10 years from now. And we're going to okay that, but yet things change. And that's, that's why I'm bringing this up. Because you're asking us to give a 10-year a plan, and that yet that was uh, okayed 10 years ago. Things are changing faster and faster every year, and the environment is changing every year. And I, I'm curious why we need to give 10 years for someone to okay a project. So um, the particular project that you're alluding to does not have a developer agreement on it. It was not subject to a developer agreement. It was subject to a different mechanism for approval. It was part of a special area plan, and then there were multiple other approvals that were done after that. At no time was there a developer agreement that actually survived. There were about six of them that were proposed and never survived scrutiny. So as a result of that, that was not the same process, completely different process. That project was delayed. There were multiple approvals to reapprove that project throughout 2015 and again in 2016 were, fi were the final approvals for that project. So that project received more scrutiny than most projects received because it came back through the process because of the fact that they, the um, timeframes lapsed. So it's a different mechanism that you're dealing with in that particular project. The reason why this is being proposed is it's to give developers opportunities to have at least the opportunity to negotiate a longer time period when they have a more complicated project that requires multiple different approvals, including rezonings, annexations in some, in some, in some instances. It gives them the board the opportunity. That does not say that the board of commissioners are going to give a 10-year approval. That is at their discretion, the BOC's discretion, how long of a time frame that they're going to give. They can give anywhere from a one-year time frame to a 10 year time frame should this pass. Right now they can give anywhere from one year to five years. And there's a, there's a mechanism within that five year window for them to come back and request with a single BOC hearing an extension of an additional five years. Can we change the year? What is the... Like if we say seven? What's the difference between the seven and 10 years if the BOC gets the opportunity I just I look I I'm I'm very concerned about what's happening with development today and the rapid expansion of things and I think a lot of things are getting approved faster than they should be without consideration of what's going on. I'm really upset about what's happened with this thing by Winn Dixie and I see I drive 54 I see all these apartments going up and and land that you know I I'm just I just think that I think as a ex builder in this area, I just think that ten years is a long time to give someone a chance to uh, persuade people to let me have my project. I, I'm sure that there's other comments on the board here, but <clears throat> I know that um, planning and zoning and zone laws and revisions and things like that take time, but. I'm just asking questions, that's all. Uh, anybody else on the board have any other questions about that? I have the same, I have the same concern. It seems a bit that something is wrong when you've got 10 years or something like that all of a sudden. Uh, I, my concern is all of a sudden it has seemed that that wetlands was destroyed. We've got apartment building. That's my concern. Anyone else? Has the city come across applications or developers that hit that five-year window? Is that why you're trying to extend? Is we that common? We absolutely have examples of this. The Bayshore Heights was was an example of that. That that developer agreement had to be extended. 
Um, so did the developer agreement with Lowe's have to be extended? Uh, both of those were extended as a result of the change in the economic conditions. Um, money became very difficult. Capital became very difficult to acquire for developers, so those projects stalled. As a result of them stalling, they had to come back through the reapproval process. Had they had the opportunity to negotiate at the time a longer time period, it would have provided for a, a, an additional benefit for those developers. We currently have a developer coming in who's looking to construct an additional um, hotel next to the hotel out on 19. There's a um, Holiday Inn Express going there. He's currently working through the negotiation process for the developer agreement. He is interested in having a longer time period than five years simply because he's trying to negotiate a connection behind the hotel that actually gets him an additional connection into the uh, mobile home park behind on their roadway, which would provide additional access. And that's not something that's going to be worked out overnight simply because there are just so many parties involved in that agreement. So he recognizes that that's going to take some time to do. As a result, a five-year window may not work for them to actually get through the construction. They also need to um, get some additional approvals through the uh, Ford Pinellas, which is also going to delay some of what they need to get done. So as a result of their very complicated process, they're looking to, this is something that would help them. Um, there are some other things that would help them, but we're not at this point willing to give the concessions that they're looking for on those those additional items. This is something that statutorily the board is is allowed to go up to 30 years. I don't think that hotel or needs a ho needs that long, but there is still ripples in the in the economy. As a result of those ripples, it becomes difficult for capital to be secured for larger projects like a hotel site. And those are desirable projects for this for this community. This community is looking for hotels. It just recently went through in 2017 and adopted the additional standards in the countywide rules to allow for us to rezone and change the land use on properties specifically to allow for larger hotel sites so that we can attract in a hoteler in a different part of the city. It's great that we're getting a Holiday Inn Express and it's great that it's adjacent to the existing Hampton Inn because they can do shared services and there's a lot of things that they can do together, but that is not the only location that people are desiring to have a hotel site. So as a result, in order to attract in those businesses, we need to provide incentives for them to go through the process. Developer agreements are not an easy process for the developer to go through. It becomes a very, a very complicated process and so the more we can provide them some guarantees that their approval, once it's, once it's been granted, is their approval for whatever the time frame is, the more they're willing to bring, come to the table and negotiate with us. We end up with a better product that way and a better project um, because we can get things that are not currently in our land development code. We can secure things like additional funding for fire trucks, additional funding for other facilities that we don't necessarily acquire through the land development code process the way the land development code regulations are written. It's a different process. It's not a easy process by any means for the developer's perspective. But they are willing to go through those because they get a guarantee or at least a more guaranteed solution because essentially whatever the land development code regulations are at the time that they go through that process, that is what's frozen in time for them. So they know that the certainty that's in that book for that time is the certainty that they have. Now that doesn't mean that they don't have to meet state regulations and that doesn't, if they change, and that doesn't mean that they don't have to meet, come up to standards. It just means that they get some, they get some guarantees that they wouldn't otherwise get in the land development code. So that's the difference between developer agreement and our other approvals. And in the development agreement, do they have to actually complete construction within the five years or pull the final building permit for construction? It depends on what is depend on. It depends on the triggers that are negotiated into the actual developer agreement. It depends on what the board stipulates under through the staff and negotiations on what are the what are the triggers. Is it a CO um, like it is in the project project over here at Mears Crossing? They can't pull CO one until the road goes through. Is it something like that that's a, that's a trigger? All of those things again are are up for negotiations when you're using a developer agreement. So as it sits right now. If the, if the council wanted to negotiate it that way, it could be five years to pull the final building permit and then still another two or three years to build out, right? So if, as it if, is right now, it could theoretically be seven years or so. Well, that depends on the Florida Building Code because, again, the Florida Building Code requires certain certain inspections to be pulled, 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 
pulled at certain times, but there are, there are again, extensions allowed under Florida Building Code. So yes, theoretically, even if the developer agreement says a five-year window, that doesn't mean if they've actually pulled and gotten into the building permit section that they can't actually get extended out, but there is no guarantee of that. So from a developer's perspective, you're not giving them the guarantee, and the Florida Building Code is a moving target. So are we selling our soul to give them an extension? Not necessarily. You can decide as a board to not even <clears throat> to recommend denial of this application, and all that happens is they are going to come back forward, come back through the process after their five-year window and request another five years. That's the difference. So right now, as of right now, they, would, they have to request the five years. They can get up to five years through their negotiation. Then they can come back through the process and get another five years. They can come back to the process and get another five years. They can come back to the process and get another five years, and they can go on like that. Or another 10 or another 10 or another 10. I think the fives. I think five is fine. Could, could I ask a question? Reasonable. Just so I under, understand it right, and I know you've said five five times, so I'm going to say it one more time. Mm -hmm. Currently, the development agreements are for five years or uh, less. Correct. And you're proposing that it gets extended to up to 10 years should the council correct. see so. And currently, there's applications pending that would directly benefit certain applicants. Correct. And so perhaps we're, you are proposing an adjustment to our code and regulations specifically to benefit an applicant. Incorrect. We are providing the, uh, the opportunity to have a discussion at the BOC level. That's what this application is for, so that this, this issue can be discussed on whether or not it is reasonable to consider extending out the developer agreement timeframe beyond the five-year window. Why is that developer that has so much at stake not with us tonight? Because he's in Ohio and he is not got that much at stake. This is just something that, that he brought to our attention as an issue. It's he's not the first developer who's brought that, that, inf that same information to us that this is, a, that this is an issue. Um, they again are looking for they're looking for the ability to vest at least somewhat vest into a community so that they know that they have the guarantee of the code every time they come to before the board that reopens their project to scrutiny to changes in the code that have occurred all of those different types of things what, under their developer agreement a lot what, what, what are the years. specific advantages to the city and to the citizens in this proposed change the specific advantages to the citizens of the community it that provides the board the opportunity during the negotiation project process with a developer to provide an additional window of time for that developer to complete their project that is the that is the benefit to all in this in this option that is the only real benefit here because it's all that we're talking about is changing the window of time and it's the potential window of time it's not a guaranteed you're getting 10 years because the code says you're getting 10 years again you're dealing with a document that is completely negotiated it is not something that you just get blindly this is what the regulations say so you can have it you can request that but if you're not going to prove to me what to the board in general that you have a phasing schedule or something that justifies that again right you're going to want some type of justification as for what as to why they're asking for that 10 years what what is it that about your particular project that makes it need more than five years or need more than three years or need more than two years what is the phasing schedule look like is it that the buildings are phased over time for some type of benefit what is what does that schedule look like that's that's the whole the whole crux of the issue there is there has to be some type of justification shown during that that process that the board agrees to that 10-year time thank you any more comments i, I have a comment when, when can we do comments now or do we or do have we have to, to move on or discussion can do anything you would like to do uh, this well, is while we have to well, open this no. to the public, there really isn't a public here to participate. Comment. I know. That, does so, that come at the comment? My question was, does that come at staff comments? But we have to actually uh, vote on this right now. Correct. So I'm going to ask the board if they have any more com comments. I guess we can discuss it between ourselves now. 
wait, so I guess I should say the public discussion is now closed. Well, did we ever open the, it? <laughs> we didn't open formally it. open it. Okay, so we can discuss it amongst ourselves then, correct? Well, Just for the record, there are no members of the public. Okay, thank you. Yes, go ahead. So when I pull open the pantry for my kids to have breakfast and they get a choice between Cheerios and Cocoa Puffs, what do you think they ask for? Cocoa Puff. And if any developer, and, and I'll give a disclaimer here, I worked for an apartment developer for a number of years, Sand Companies, Inc., out of Minnesota, and we developed apartments down here. And developers are a unique breed. Um, there's only one number that they're going to ask for in their application. No one's going to ask for one. No one's going to ask for two. No one's going to ask for five. They're going to ask for ten, period. Well, let's just be honest with ourselves. Is that should we decide this is the right thing? Every single development agreement that will be issued here, two, four, will be for 10 years. Right. Maybe that is a terrific thing. Perhaps developing apartments or, or hotels is the most important thing for the city of Tarpon Springs. I don't know that. I don't think that um, having them come back after five years and saying please and us looking at it again is necessarily a bad thing either. That's the end of that comment. Thank you. I'd like to say that five years, a lot changes in five years, especially with the, the hurricanes and climate change and uh, economy and everything else. I think five years is plenty. If they're going to come back and say, hey, I need an extension, then at that time after five years, they can have the extension. Uh, I, I, I don't see why they need 10 years. Anyone else? No? All right, then can we call for a vote, please? Oh, sorry. Yep. Motion, please? Someone? Or comment? I'm going to motion that uh, in regards to proposed. I forgot my spectacles, forgive me. Application 18-148. Application 18-148 is denied. Do I hear a second? Seconded. Can we have a vote, please? Did we do that right? Because from what I understand, application 18-149 has been taken off the record. Is that correct? So we're only talking about 18-148. Correct. correct? Mm -hmm. Mr. Petrantoni. You did not say yes. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll vote. Oh, we, we go ahead. All right, I'll vote yes on this. Miss McCumber, yes. Mr. Vesey, yes. Mr. Stravopoulos, yes. Mr. Coiner, yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Mr. Hase? Yes. Thank you. Motion has been, I'm not sure, is it approved or denied, I guess, no, right? Motion has been approved. Motion has been approved. The recommendation. <coughs> and the recommendation is not make a change to the code. Thank you. Thanks to all my help. Okay, moving on. Uh, number six, application 18149 is not on the record tonight. That's been changed. And we move on now to number seven, staff comments. Staff comments, we handed out a revised schedule to you guys. The one that was in your packet um, was the one that was the schedule until we found out there was a conflict in the TRC um, agendas essentially and I already put circles all over my calendar well yours hasn't changed okay the planning and zoning meetings remain the same all of the other boards remain the same with the exception of the TRC but because we provide an entire schedule to you we're providing you the revised schedule so that you have the full information so you should you want to attend one of those or or whatever I mean they are open to the public so you can't Thank speak you. but they are open to the public since those those have changed to the second and fourth um, Thursday we wanted to make that you aware of that with the exception of the one on the 4th of July we move that to the 3rd of July so that'll be a Wednesday but that's our only comment okay thank you and now we move on to number eight 
board comments. Discussion item, public notice requirements, one of my pet So peeves. the board directed staff to provide the sections of the code so that you could have a conversation um, with us and possibly make some recommendations um, to the uh, city manager on changes that you think are necessary to the public, the public notice requirements of the land development code. So I went through every section of the land development code that I possibly could that has notice requirements and provided those to you. We sent them out to you in December with the expressed understanding that you would have more than a month to review those, those sections of code and hopefully you guys got a chance to go through them. Um, with the holidays and that type of thing, and you've had most of January too, because we I know we resent it out. So as a result, that's what we have here. Um, this is basically just an open discussion on the site plan and other sections that allow for public notice, where public notice is required for you guys to provide to staff your concerns, comments, recommendations, and I will pass those along to the city manager. My concern has been several times here of the 200 foot notice when you're applying for a building permit or uh, change in, uh, as we all know, there's an issue in the fruit bowl here of someone building a two story uh, garage that really wasn't necessary in that area and it was only a 200 foot notice and I've asked several times for a 500 foot notice because a 200 foot notice is only two houses on either side. And it, that the 500 foot notice would give more people in the neighborhood in a historic zone an opportunity to review and understand. So what is happening with that? I've asked that several times. You guys have said you're looking into it and I haven't heard yet other than the fact that you're looking into it. I want to know what's happening with, I want a 500 foot notice. That's what this discussion is for, for you to make your formal recommendations that the staff will then take to the city manager and the city manager will determine how he wants to present those to the BOC. Okay. Whether it be through amendments to the land development code, whether it be through a workshop with the, with the, with the BOC members, whatever that, that needs to be, that's what this discussion is specifically for. So I asked that about four or five, six months ago. So I understand now why somebody wants a 10-year recommendation. I don't understand why it takes so long to just ask for a recommendation. I mean, I want this, recommend, I want this recommendation to whoever we need to to get this thing changed. How do we do that? And Is that we what would, we're doing here and tonight? And we would be glad at the, at the end of this discussion to provide all of your recommendations to the city manager for him to determine on where he would like those where those recommendations to go. Well, why does it like take six months to do that? That's uh, that's what I'm trying to understand. I mean, I'm frustrated with government. I think we all are. That's why we're here. And I'm just curious why it takes so long to have that recommendation to someone else to give a rec to finally make a decision. And once again, at the conclusion of this discussion, we will provide your recommendations, all of your recommendations to the city manager for him to make a determination on where he would like that in, uh, that information to go, whether it's going to the Board of Commissioners in, the amend in an amendment or whether he wants to have a workshop to discuss it, whatever his, whatever his discretion is that he would like to do. We're just here to collect the information to provide it to the, to, on to the next stage. Okay, thank you. And that will, then recommendation will be given to them when? I do not know that. That's something that I would have to discuss to, with the city manager, and it would be at his discretion. <laughs> so it could be another six months? That is up to the city manager. <laughs> I'm just here to collect the information and provide it to the All city right, manager. All right, I'm sorry. I, I'm just like, this is ridiculous. I just find this absolutely ridiculous that it takes. No wonder some developer wants a 10-year <laughs> extension to get something done. I'm just asking to someone to go talk to them and say, hey, we need a, a, another extension. Why, why does it take so long? That's what I'm trying to understand. We're here to collect. I know. Collect you've said that. We did why does it take so long? Look, we're doing the best we can with the staff that we have available to provide all of the, all of the necessary documents and all of the necessary information for this board and to support all of the boards. We are, you are one of three boards that we are staffed to. 
We have other applications and other sections of code that we're wor currently working on. We are three people. We so process a lot of applications, of and we're doing the best that we can to provide the, the services to this board and to provide the information. We have just recently gone through the budget process to get an entire land development code rewrite. After three years of requesting it, we have now gotten the opportunity to do that. We are in the, we are in the process of trying to go out and get a consultant to do that. These, all of these provisions and all of the requests that everybody has been asking for, the Dark Skies Initiative, this initiative, HPB changes, all of those have been prioritized on a list to be included with the consultant's documentation to be provided to them so that a, a holistic approval can be done and review can be done in the Land Development Code so we don't continually keep changing section after section after section and leave in problem areas that then never get addressed because of the fact that we didn't think about that because we wanted to force through a change, one change. There are all kinds of different notice requirements in here out, outside of a 500 foot radius. There are notice requirements to go in the paper. There is a different process for, for site plans. There's a different process for HBB. This is giving you the opportunity to go through all of those different sections of code and either decide which ones you want to address holistically so that you're dealing with it all at once because what's gonna happen is if we make a one change to HBB's change to 500 foot radius, okay, we make that one change, we're gonna have somebody come in and say, I want my conditional, I want conditional use to be 500, and we're gonna be doing this over and over and over. You have three staff members, two of which are your planners. You have no city planner at this point. We have, put, we have been going out for a city planner for seven months and found no one. So as a result, this staff is doing the best that it can to prioritize all of the different changes that people want and to provide it holistically to a consultant so that we can get it on the docket for you to review section by section of the land development code and make your recommendations to the BOC and then the BOC can go through it forward and decide if they want to make those changes. That is what we are trying to do as a staff. Thank it you. is not an easy accomplishment. So let me be clear that I would never even assume that you guys are not working hard. You've done an excellent job always. But it just seems to me that, you know, when you'd say you bring this up and it, every time it's, it's like it takes more time, more time, more time. And that also makes us understand why a developer wants 10 years for something like that. So I'm just asking, it, in your opinion, in your opinion, I'm not asking for anything else, when do you think this change might happen? I have no opinion of when it's going to happen because I have zero control over what goes to BOC, when it goes to BOC. We make a recommendation to the city manager, and the city manager decides on what gets prioritized first to go to BOC. Okay. So when that happens, when he makes a decision based on your recommendations, whether he wants to roll these into the land development code changes holistically or deal with them separately, that is going to be at his discretion. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Is, is our only line of communication with the Board of Commissioners through the city manager and through this process in regards to any topic whatsoever? With regards to changes to a formal <clears throat> changes to a land development code, this is the process that's outlined in the land development code and in, you, in the, um, your board procedures for you to, for you to um, communicate formally with the board. So as an individual citizen, no. As a board, yes, this is the only way. There, is a, there are procedures set out within the Code of Ordinances that give you your powers and duties as a board. Your powers and du duties, including making recommendations on applications that come before you, are to review the code, the Land Development Code, and make recommendations to the Board of Commissioners as to what you'd like to see changed. Okay, thank you. So, and, so, yeah, and so then there's yes. a procedure that follows after that. And that's what I suspected. And now this is total humor. If I were a developer that lived in Utah and wanted to change my land development agreement from five to ten years, I could probably have gotten that done. But if I sat here on this board and asked for a change several times, we'd be in the mud. Yeah. Now this is total, this is just between us, but if I were on the outside asking in, somehow they can get this drawn up, put in, and it's a topic. We get a vote on, but should the chairman ask month after month after month 
for a change of a 500 foot mailing rule and I remember distinctly the day that you asked for it I guess I would just question where the priorities are so in, without in a, the politest way so without a consensus of this board that those are your recommendations that's one board member asking for that change no we actually had a discussion among us regarding this issue the, I was I, here we were all even took a loose vote this. that I must wasn't have applied. Been, you I, must I not must have been have here. Not been here she that day. Here, wait, we, wait, 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 so wait, I'm, I beg wait. to differ. There was a discussion, but there was never a consensus because I never asked for a consensus vote as to whether it was a consensus to make that recommendation. To staff to bring it. Well, maybe you didn't bring it up that we needed a consensus on that. There was never. There was only discussion item. There was hmm. never anything that said we're going to make this recommendation. Had there been, we would have had a consensus from the full board. Interesting. Well, I guess we were all. We had asked uh, them to research and find yeah, out, like, yeah. how what other cities were doing and so forth. And they asked for that. So, all right. So, in the future, if we want to change something, do we need to ask the attorney then? How do we need it a consensus, or we need to be more clear about what we want? Well, there needs to be an agenda item on it first. There's a Jenna item right now. Okay. So where do we go from here? If you want to, We're just that, stupid, that, so I'm, we want to know. Is, my question is, is that the only thing that you want to make a recommendation on based on there's a... That's the only thing we've discussed HPB in the last several in months. There, the HPB language is in there for the the section of code that dictates the 200 foot okay. radius is in there is in that thing. All of the notice requirements are okay. in there. So, so they could open that's what's and, yeah. and that's what's highlighted, correct? Right. And it's okay. and it's, it's all the Remember, there's a 200 notice 200 foot notice requirement for several different things. Right. So that is the 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 information that's been provided by staff with the holistic recommendation. So are you, I guess my question to the board is, are you making a consensus that you want anywhere that it's a 200 foot radius as opposed to you want it consensus to 500 foot? All right, so question to the board. Uh, I personally have not read through. Has anyone else here read no. through? No. So may I make a recommendation, I hate to do it, that we, can we postpone this until our next meeting? And I recommend that all of us at the board read this thing thoroughly, and we come back and we make a decision on it. Chairman. And satisfy um, the city and the attorney and everybody else. If there's a leap of faith, sorry, Chairman. Um, I, in fact, have and did. And since your request or the uh, concept is very concrete and very specific, although there is a lot of highlighted items, there is only one number that is listed. It is only 200 feet. Your request and our idea of consensus is specifically 500 feet. I think it would be fair to say that we could ask for that consensus on that agenda item to move that forward. I what would be comfortable proposing that. What applications? What applications do you want the 500 foot on? Because there's uh, several different application types all, right? that require that require notice. Of surrounding property owners it's not just historic preservation I know but I mean if you're gonna build a commercial building wouldn't it commercial nice? buildings do not require notice so site plan does not require any notice requirements then I'm gonna say I, I'm agree with the 500 feet let's I, I think everybody I mean 500 feet is two houses on either side okay but 500 feet for what application is what I'm trying to is what I'm trying to clarify you have a majority of you have different applications here that have that that require. You tell me something that 500 feet would be a really problem. I'm not saying that 500 feet is a problem. I'm asking you to give me which applications you want to address. All which applications, applications that a footage mailing notice would be appropriate for, whether it crosses the boundary of historical, okay. residential, that's, commercial, that's, that's or renovation. Way, that's way too broad. Your current regulations don't don't include every application that you actually see. For notice, so you got you've got to give me more detail on what you're actually trying you've to. You've got accomplish. to give us a little more detail. Then. Okay, I mean, so can conditional you tell us uses a bit? conditional uses require 200 foot. HBB applications require 200 foot. Um, your variances applications require 200 foot plus an advertisement in the newspaper plus they require a sign on the property. Your conditional uses require additionally a sign on the property as well as the 200 feet. Site plans require no notice. 
Your annexations require notice, 200 feet. They require an ad in the newspaper. They require notice on the property. Your land development code changes, your zoning changes. They require 200 foot notice. They require a sign on the property. They require advertising in the newspaper. Your land, your land use changes. They require 200 foot notice. They require a sign on your property. They require um, an ad in the newspaper. So you've got to be very, very specific. I don't see a problem with any of those being 500 feet. I feel like we're going in a circle here. Okay. Um, I think we dictated it's the that 500 we would like feet to have 500 that I, The 500 feet, feet is not what, I, what I'm disputing. I would like clear direction from this board all of that. on which particular applications you want to deal with. If you want to deal with all of the applications that currently have It'll take have 200-foot um, radius, then that is what you need to say, in your, and you need to direct the staff to do that. You need to be very specific. I am asking for specific detailed we need to be recommendation on what you're looking for all that, that that's what we are asking for here anything that has the 200 anything that has the 200 feet in it has to be changed to 500 is that the agreement of the board yes all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. I know. <laughs> so there, forgive there, me is there, by, Great. by show of hands is there a consensus for this yes there's a Can I ask something else? Of uh, course you can. The 15 days uh, notice, which would be in the newspaper and also in the mailing, is that an, a, an appropriate time? Or do we need to extend that time as well as 15? It's just because that's everywhere also in every conditional. Well, as long as they receive the notice, that's fine. Is the 15 days? Okay. I wasn't no, sure. I, 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 without looking Some of at them. it, yeah, without looking at specific, I couldn't tell you what those requirements are. Tell me next postage. So, from a legal perspective, okay. I can tell you, annexation deviates from that that window as well because it's it's a different statute for voluntary annexation. So the the noticing requirements for the time frames are different. So, what newspaper do you advertise into? In the Tampa Times. And we try to we try to use Hardly exclusively the North the North Times anymore. edition, <laughs> so it's the Friday the Friday edition, so that everyone that was kind of what I was looking. It's like once a week, like even the tarp, you know, the Beacon comes out once a week. So yeah, that but fifteen we, days. We don't use the Beacon. We use the the yeah, Times. The Times. Okay. Well, on that has to be has to be a big that it mm -hmm. So I have a question. What about other forms of you know? <clears throat> The world is changing. There's Facebook. There's this. There's that. I mean, have we thought about, uh, you know, newspaper costs money, but is there some other ways? I mean, I'm sure that uh, news, actual newspaper uh, circulation has dropped tremendously. I mean, we need to think about the future a little bit and think about other forms of informing people. Okay, so the newspaper is statutorily required on most of the applications, including variances, your land use change, your zoning change, your annexations. So that your conditional uses and HB applications have been standardized to include all of those things, although your conditional use doesn't require an advertisement. I got to tell you, since I've been on this board, is probably the only time I've ever started looking at those stupid ads in the paper. <laughs> and most of the time, I'm like, oh, what's that? I just like, I don't think that, I bet if you took a consensus of people who get a newspaper, there's probably maybe 1% or 2% that actually look at that stuff in the newspaper. We've got to think about, this, I'm just, this is comments, we've got to think about other forms of informing the public. Oh, I, I see it. I, I understand that. But, I mean, a, come on. How many people read, get a newspaper? Well, that is a statutory requirement. Do you have a problem with that? I okay. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm just bringing it up. I think that, you know, we, it's the future, folks. I mean, we got to talk to somebody and say we got to figure this out because millennials are not getting any newspapers. They don't, hell, they don't even they get don't cable TV on. anymore. Everyone, look, you look, everyone looks at it on their phone. Well, the other thing, too, is when you're talking but about advertising in the newspaper, it's in the online edition. Yeah. Well, it's in the online edition. 
Okay. It's in the whatever the legal ad is for that online edition. I, I don't use the online edition, so I don't know. Uh, all right, all right. Let's move on. Statutory. So, is, are there any other board comments tonight? It's been an interesting evening. No. Then I recommend uh, adjournment. May I have a recommendation? Move to adjourn. Uh, I get it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passed. We're moving on. <coughs> okay. Damn it, I feel so useless here sometimes. <laughs> Every once in a while. I, I just, I, I just, ah. Oh.